season of Vault Supreme's Synth VGM Dream Stream Machine Podcast. The podcast that plays the synthiest video game music in all the galaxies. Okay, so we are back for season three. Uh, but folks, I don't think I'm going to be committing to any regular release schedule at this point. I've just got so many projects going on at the moment. Uh, some of them are my own things I've started. Some of them are commission work for doing some video game, video game soundtracks. So obviously for me, I'd much rather be making music than talking about it. So that's where most of my time and energy is going at the moment. But um, I will continue to make more podcast episodes when the inspiration strikes. And this week, my friends, I've been struck in the face by some inspiration. We're going to be talking about a topic that is probably very unappreciated, but it's something that I actually get pretty excited about, and that is menus, specifically menu music, and uh, for this episode, how it's used in fighting games. So... Back, rewind back to 2018, I released a sci-fi music pack where I um, basically broke up all the songs into layers so that the programmer or developer could use them to make dynamic music in their games. It's pretty simple, you just need to sync all the loops or layers or tracks, whatever you want to call it, and then trigger the different layers to fade in and out based on what's happening in the game. Uh, I did a few example videos on YouTube, uh, how to use the music in games, uh, and I, yeah, I really should do more of them, but one of the examples was how to use dynamic music to create a sense of suspense or building anticipation while advancing through the menus. <laughs> I personally love it. I think dynamic menu music or dynamic music in menus is just really cool and it's effective although you know there's some cases where it's just completely unnecessary but for fighting games i find that there's a real need to progress the player through a range of uh, emotions as they are introduced to the game uh, they see the title they see the menus they choose the game mode they pick their fighters they pick their stage and then boom the versus screen comes up and it's fight time. I think it's really important for the music to kind of drive those emotions and, and bring them, uh, bring the player to a feeling of being ready to start throwing some fists around. So in this episode, I want to explore a few examples of fighting games and just kind of casually check out how they deal with that progression through the menus, basically from the opening cutscene or title screen through to um, just when the actual fight starts. And we're also going to uh, try out some of the music I've made and see if it works or not when I put it into one of these games. So that's from a project I was working on last year. It's a, uh, a fighting music pack. I've put that aside for now, but I've got a lot of music in that. So I'll have to finish that up soon and put it out there for people to use. Uh, I still want to treat this episode like, you know, like a music podcast. So there will be lots of, there'll be a bit of like pausing on a screen and just listening to a lot of the song and appreciating the music. 
but I need to mention that I've done screen captures for all these examples. So ideally, if it's practical, you'll probably want to watch this episode on YouTube and I'll leave a little link in the description for you to find that. But all right, let's get to business. We'll start with one of my favorite games, um, favorite examples. I think it's a pretty good example of what I'm talking about. It's Street Fighter 4. Ah, so let's dive in and give it a listen. And I should probably mention that this, uh, you know, my podcast theme song is pretty much inspired by Street Fighter 4 music and the kind of vibe. So maybe you might hear some of those influences as we check it out. Okay, here we go from the opening video. Alright, here we go. You feel that suspense building? Lots of energy. I'm piping you up right from the start. Ultra right, Street let's Fighter get 4. To the game, the menu. So nothing. Silence. There we go. Same track again. It's kind of a bit weird when it repeats itself. I don't know. Maybe people like the idea of it coming back because it's familiar. I probably would have used different music. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's not. All right. Well, let's check out. What happens when we start moving into the arcade mode? Oh, you hear that? It's pretty subtle. Yeah, you've got some more layers with the drums in the main menu, and then when you go to arcade menu, it pulls back a little bit. Listen next time I go back into it. It's subtle, but it's there, and it's cool. <laughs> Very subtle. Alright, let's go to the pick a fighter screen. The craziest and wildest fighters yeah, definitely the from around the world to join in the fight. But only one step up in intensity. This is basically, you know, except when you're playing with these little story bits that come up before you start fighting, this is basically the screen before you go into your big fight. So this this particular screen, this pick your fighter, in my opinion, always needs to get you ready to, yeah, you know, start throwing those fists around. This is a cool track, so I'll just let it play for a bit and then we'll move on to something else. So next up, I want to use uh, some of my music that I've created for a fighting menu progression. And we'll see how it works with Street Fighter. This is the same game. We'll just replace it with my stuff. <laughs> so it's supposed to be kind of a, a lighthearted kind of hip hop vibe going with this one. All right, so we're in the main menu. Now, one of the things I like to do is have a separate layer or a separate loop for when you go into the options. So, let's just try that out and see what it's like. I like that. I think it works well. Pulls back a little bit. But you know you're in a different section of the menus. Alright, so let's go back to the main menu. So we'll go to arcade mode and we'll get our little options bit that comes up there. Alright, so instead of uh, pulling back like Street Fighter 4 does usually with their music, I step it up another notch. And then soon when we go to the uh, K 
character selection screen, we'll step it up again. Serious, a bit more sinister. Pretty short loop. Could probably have a bit more variation to it, I think. Alright, we can look at the button configuration here, which is basically like a, a menu. Yeah, it really pulls it back. Allows the player to focus on the menus. <laughs> We'll go back to the character screen. That transition wasn't so nice, but I think it worked well. Alright, let's move on to a different game. Alright, well, uh, pretty much the, all the games we're looking at in this episode are games that I own, you know, so I can just do the screen capture and take my time through the menus, but I know there are a lot of you out there who know your fighting games really well, you know, games in general really well, so I'd love for all of you to leave a comment uh, on the YouTube video telling me what games you think are really good examples of this kind of this musical progression through menus. I know there's a lot out there. Um, fighting games or any game and then maybe I'd love to do another episode looking at some of these other examples which are probably you know much better examples of what I'm talking about than these games that we'll be looking at today but let's get to it I do have a ton of Street Fighter games in the 30th anniversary collection so let's check them out um, they're not you know, ideal examples because I think all the games in the uh, 30th anniversary collection or whatever it's called, they're all uh, taken from the arcade versions. And you know, when you at an arcade, uh, you don't get to go through menus and stuff like that. But they still have that, you know, that important kind of progression through the screens, uh, the main screen, select your fighter, select your stage if that's an option. Um, so let's start off with an old school Street Fighter, an absolute classic, one that I remember as a kid. This is Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting with all of Yoko Shimomura's amazing tunes that have stuck in our heads for decades. Alright, let's go. Alright, because these are the arcade games, we're going to fly through. You know, they don't give you time to sit on menus. they got money to make. We've got to get the next player on the, on the system but man this stuff is ingrained in my brain I never even owned this game as well until I was maybe in my 20s but from a kid I knew these tracks and they're just so good it's excellent energy and I just absolutely love this <laughs> character selection music Delay timing is a bit weird. I don't know what it is with some of these. Round yeah, one. First screen. Fight. Good first screen. There we go. I'm fighting, but no, I think we'll, we'll get out of this. Yeah, I just embarrassed myself. I absolutely suck at fighting games. I love fighting games, but I suck at fighting games. Um, yeah, that went super quick not enough time to think or even talk um you know the arcade games they just want you to push through play the game lose the game and then get someone else to chuck in chuck in some quarters but i think you know there's nothing dynamic about that it's just different tracks but you know there's no loading time between any of the scenes it's just boom the song finishes, it's into the next song. Um, I don't think that uh, that this character selection screen was a step up in intensity, but in my mind, that is that is the perfect <laughs> character selection screen. It could just be nostalgia, but 
it has this kind of uh, sense of anticipation. And yeah, there's all these different versions and I, I don't know, there's the music, some of it just kind of sounds out of time. I don't know what it is, but um, that definitely sounded out of time. I haven't played that version of the game on the 30th anniversary, uh, maybe at all, except for that. So yeah, but let's move on to another classic Street Fighter game. Um, I think let's go for, we'll move into the future a little bit, all the way to 1996. <laughs> all right. Yeah, very different vibe. Street Fighter Alpha 2. So, a bit more of a jazz fusion kind of vibe to it. Still pretty rocky. Listen to all these soundtracks. From memory, I think... I think it's... This soundtrack is really, really good. This particular track. I don't remember. I haven't played this game much at all either. There you go. Hadouken. And Street Fighter Alpha 2 on the screen. You definitely need a big echoey voice at the start of the game. Oh yeah. This could be my second favorite <laughs> character selection screen music. This is just so cool. But we're not going to be able to listen to it because it's the arcade mode. Stupid slap bass sounds. They're just, for some reason, they're good. Ooh, a sinister verse screen. All right, let's do some fighting, hey? Let's see that thing, hey, it's just incredible. Apart from the first few chords. Yeah, that's enough of that. <laughs> Again, uh, very quick through all of that. Not enough time to soak it up. Not enough time to really uh, listen. But that, okay, so we've got another character selection screen thing, music's theme there, which is completely different. It Instead of hitting you with the kind of hardcore, intense, yeah, you're about to fight. It was really kind of this, I don't know, kind of, I think of it as a quirky, funky, jazzy kind of theme. And completely different set of emotions that it gives you before you start fighting. Very interesting, very interesting. We've got quite a range already and we're, we're still in Street Fighter. But let's move to some more Street Fighter games. I've got, I've got a few. We're not going to go through all of them, so don't worry. I've got some other games that are completely different. But let's stick with Street Fighter for now while we're in there. And all right, let's pick something. All right, the next in the series, Street Fighter Alpha 3. Let's see what changes they've made. It sounds a bit more like Tekken music. I don't know if that's a decision they made to be a bit more modern. We need to make it sound more 3D like Tekken. Decent track there. A little bit underwhelming. <laughs> That's a weird effect. Sounds like someone burping. A little underwhelming, I reckon, this track is. It's certainly not bad. I mean, and these are old games as well, so they you know, there's no dynamic progression as we move through the menus. It's just from one track to another. Alright, so this is Ryu's little story. 
underwhelming, I reckon. Versus screen. No change in music. Right. Right. Slow fade out, and here we are. Do some fighting. <laughs> All right, better quit before I lose. <laughs> All right, let's go to Street Fighter Three Third Strike. I reckon this this uh, game has an amazing soundtrack. Um, you got a few cool <laughs> rap songs in there and I think the music is pretty pretty out there pretty experimental a um, bit of risk taking but really cool music really cool game um, the menu music in my opinion is <laughs> it's really cool so uh, let's let's give it a go Street Fighter 3 Third Strike alright Capcom. Alright, here we go. Characters showing up. Cool introduction, all these like kind of almost like sketched versions of the characters. Pretty different to all the other stuff. lyrics are very much just talking about playing a computer game. I would usually think that is just super corny and not, not good, but I don't know what it is about this game. Silence on the screen, yeah. I don't know, I don't know what it is about this, but I love it. I love this. Just listen to that. Really short loop, but <laughs> I don't know. I think that's great. I'd usually think that kind of thing is stupid, but there you go. We only got a few seconds to make our moves. So we need a couple of seconds loop. I think these kind of hip hop vibes work really well with this game. And that's why I kind of tried to do a little bit of that in my music, the fight music back I was doing. Alright, well, the first screen, you know, it's not like great, but. Engage! Great tune. Man! Look at that. That's like. If this game was released now, people would be complimenting this game on its visuals. The animations are just so. So good. Let's go. But we're gonna quit. <laughs> Alright, what's up next? What are we gonna do? I've never played the original Street Fighter 3, so let's let's check it out. Completely different fight. Almost I'm trying to relive the old school days. Street Fighter 3, new generation, new generation. Yeah. Select your character. Street Fighter, select your character. Right. Took too long. <laughs> yeah, cool track. The, the, the effects are in tune, they're in key. It's all right. It's it's amazing how Street Fighter Three, Street Fighter Two. You know, there's so many different versions of these games, and they got entirely different soundtracks. Round one. Fight. Again, man. Look at these visuals. They're just literally up to standard with most of the kind of 2D fighting games that are coming out these days. This looks so good. Maybe there's some uh, technical hurdles they had to overcome to 
actually get this game to work on the hardware back in the day. Forget those details. Very interesting. Go check it out for yourself. All right, here we go. Okay, how about we... Let's go back to the original Street Fighter. I've maybe played this once. Oh, what an effect. Someone just pooped through that wall. Still got that original classic Street Fighter font. Brilliant. Oh, that's harsh. Yeah, you know, with these arcade things, you leave it too long and it just jumps to a uh, demo screen. Where do I come from? USA or Japan? Uh, Japan. Japan. Such a bad game. I mean, I think it was impressive when it came out in the 80s. Music's not great. It's not that bad. Go to heaven. Man, what an insult. Alright, that's enough. Um, look, even this 30th Street Fighter anniversary thing has got this idea sorted. So, we go back. You know, you get the front screen, it's it's quite mellow. But it's got that heroic feeling. So I think one of the vibes is basically you hit the players with the main screen. You might hype them up with a little video or something and then hit them with the, the title screen and then put them in the menu. Often what it seems is that things are a little bit kind of heroic at first hold back the tension for a while and then when you by the time you get to the character screen that's when you throw in the tension the kind of little bit of intensity like yeah something's about to happen I'm ready for this let's go make a decision and start fighting so all right I think we should go to a completely different series now I have got a Dragon Ball game it's dragon ball fighter z in australia so let's give it a go this is a this is got a kind of interesting way of dealing with its menus so this should be a bit of fun boom rock and roll straight away press any button dragon ball fighter z you got that Cool. It's a bit cheesy, but you know, uh, you got this cool mix of rock and roll and the kind of rock orchestral stuff. Nothing happens when you go to the options. <laughs> I think music should change when you go to the options. It's like, you know, someone's been listening to a, a lot of Joe Satriani when they compose this soundtrack. And yeah, I, I should mention who the composers are. Uh, maybe I'll leave that in the description. All right, let's get going. Pauses. Loading pauses, not good. But hey, look at this menu. You know, a 3D walkthrough menu. Music's very kind of uplifting. High energy, but uplifting. There's no real kind of suspense or anticipation of something to come there's no tension it's just just rocking out with that Joe Satriani style music I've got to say as well this game is this game is fantastic visually and musically sound effects it's just like an explosion in your face when you start playing this game a lot of fun especially if you you know even if you don't know how to play like me, you can just jump in and it feels like you're doing stuff. So let's do arcade mode and see where we go from here. Yeah. I don't, yeah there's no need to change the music at this point. Let's just listen to the tune for a bit, eh? Much different to the arcade games, you know, these are all really decent length tunes.
I don't expect you to not know what you're doing or take your time. And they also go through a range of emotions, you know, like... The same thing just over and over again. Here we go. More serious, be more, be more rocking. Let's let's listen to this track. It's a decent track, so we'll let it play for a bit. I do find that a lot of these um, character selection screens, when you jump into the screen, it hits you with something really kind of heavy and um, intense, but then it pretty quickly goes back to a heroic kind of sound. I don't know if that's a thing that they all do or what. Let's get our team together. Let's play the game. Loading screen. Kill the vibe. Track. Now we're picking. What are we doing? Select a course. There's basically how's the tournament going to be worked out? Tournament tree. Again, a little bit heavier. Serious, a bit more minor. Yeah, you can see the way the tournament's gonna get worked out. Love a good little verse screen snippet like that. <laughs> That's great. Get a load of this game. This is a cool game. I've not played this game much at all. <laughs> I suck, but here you go. I'll let you watch a little bit. I might not fully see it here, but this game really nails the whole over-the-top vibe that these fighting games have, and even these, you know, like, Dragon Ball animes, they're just they're so incredibly over-the-top, and, you know, you don't take it too seriously, it's, it's a bit of fun. This game really nails it, but, um, check it out for yourself, it's a, apparently, it's a good fighting game, it's easy to get into, but I know from first-hand experience that, you know, once you start playing someone who's good, you realise how bad you are, but when you're playing just the easy computer, you feel like you're doing pretty well, because everything's just so intense. Alright, cool menu, but let's move on to something different again. Alright, I think we really, we really need to change it up here. And the perfect game I have in mind, again, another game I <laughs> haven't played much at all. I don't know if I've clocked up even an hour of playing of this game. But it is is—it is a good game. It's an amazing game. The soundtrack is m possibly one of the best fighting game soundtracks ever. I don't like, you know, comparing soundtracks and saying this is the best, this isn't. But for the sake of just... You know, making a point, this game has one of the greatest soundtracks for a fighting game, in my humble opinion, and also in the uh, humble opinion of 
hundreds of thousands of other people. It is Skullgirls. So let's check this out. This is a completely different approach to fighting games and fighting game menus and the progression through the menus, but let's check it out. <laughs> All right, so we're in the opening cutscene, the opening video that plays, you know, before we've even got to the title screen. <laughs> I feel like that voice is very much a uh, Ennio Morricone kind of thing. The music, on the other hand, is... Maybe the progression's a little bit spaghetti western, but the, the sounds are definitely not. We're being introduced to all the different characters. Honestly, this particular track doesn't do that much for me. Got to have that ascending rise. And boom, Skullgirls. Oh, yeah. Here we go. We're at the title screen. Skullgirls, second encore. Press any button to start. So good. I certain will... I certainly wouldn't call it intense, but you know, it's the tempo is fast enough that it has a certain kind of intensity to it. It's kind of this juxtaposition between the relaxing kind of jazz vibes it gives off and then the, the tempo that really kind of hypes you up a little bit. But yeah, completely different to every, anything else that we've looked at so far. Man, what, <laughs> what a awesome character select music track. How do I even describe this? I think it's more uplifting than anything else. It's Pokua! We are gonna get you. Again, it's I think the tempo. Tempo is the thing that kind of gives the intensity to it all, but the actual composition is fairly laid back and really uplifting and kind of you know, chill. Lots of fast little runs. Pain wheel! You've got a mix of the kind of jazz sounds with the synth. I think that's pretty cool. It's a nice little hybrid. Again, this is a game I've hardly played at all. I think, kind of like Dragon Ball Z, that Dragon Ball Fighter Z game. This is like, uh, this is <laughs> over the top animations. The sounds are great. We'll get, oh, let's do a little example. I don't, I don't think I've ever even used this character. This battle is all in the mind. Let's rock! Embarrassing. <laughs> no, I think I think bad characters is an example, but yeah. Even this background music for this track is you know, compared to everything else, it's, it's a little underwhelming. I guess it fits the, uh, the synth theme. Oh, I think we've seen enough of that. Let's, let's move on. That, I think that's a really... That's a game that has, you know, basically decided for itself what the music's going to be. It hasn't really followed trends or anything like that. Um, obviously, you can look at all kinds of games and, and see what works and not have to copy it. You can just say, well, 
this style of music. It's this element of this music that has worked for this certain thing. So if you can apply that same element, gosh, we're getting really vague here, but if you can apply that element to any style of music, any idea, then, you know, you've got something. You've got something. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Alright, let's move on to another fighting series of games, um, and this is probably, in, in my mind, in my limited knowledge, probably the most intense when it comes to music, and it is the Guilty Gear series, and the game that I have is Guilty Gear, and <laughs> I always forget how to pronounce this because I've hardly played this game at all, but the title screen does tell you how to pronounce this. It's Guilty Gear Exard Revelator version. So I guess I've got the uh, the final version of this game. Haven't played this game at all. Like, I, I went through a phase last year where I was putting together this, this fighting game uh, music pack, and I... It was during a time, it was what American summer sales or something like that. So there was these summer sales going on, even though it was winter over here in Australia. And there's all these really great games on special. And I got, I got a lot of really good fighting games for really cheap, like, you know, 80% off, that kind of thing. So, I, I, but I've had some of these games just kind of sitting there. I've, I've played them for a bit. And I've never come back to them. This is one of them. Again, another great, great game. Um, but hasn't really, hasn't really pulled me in. But man, the music in these Guilty Gear games. And to think that the developer, the, you know, the lead um, guy in charge of making these games is the one coming up with these compositions. I'm pretty sure he's not uh, performing them, but, you know, he's writing this stuff. He's doing art. He's doing the stories. He's doing so much, and I really respect that. And I, <laughs> I had to go pull the name up because I, I this kind of thing doesn't stick in my memory. But I think his name is Daisuke Ishiwatari. And, you know, he's dedicated to what he's done. And he's created this amazing series of games. Um, amazing visually, musically. It's the kind of thing where, you know, if you've... You create something that has so many facets of it that are really impressive. But then you've got this entire separate following where they're just like the music is just so amazing and then you've got other people who are probably like you know the little story elements they put in are amazing the graphics are amazing the visuals that kind of thing um i don't know i think you know if you can if you can pull off that and have your finger in that many pies when you're making a game you've done really well for yourself but let's check out uh guilty gear xard revelator and see how they deal with their menus. Guilty Gear Exard. Exard. <laughs> um, we're at the title screen. We're going to not let it play the, the intro video, um, which has its own song, but here we go. Boom, again, the same track. It's, it's kind of weird when it starts again, I think, but whatever. Um... Cool track. It seems very different to the rest of the soundtrack. It's um, clearly, you know, it's played on acoustic guitars where the rest of it is just like mostly saturated in heavy metal kind of electric guitars. And so, yeah, this is pretty cool. Reminds me of Trigon or something. I don't know. The, uh, the anime Trigon. Good anime. Check it out if you're into uh, Cowboys in Outer Space. I think this variation in music in the menus is uh, a clever choice, especially when you've got so much heavy metal. 
very compressed. <laughs> the guitars are really compressed. But uh, let's check out what the um, character selection music is like. Versus. Versus. Who yeah, so there's, the there's no real change in anything. It's just the same track playing as you move through all those menus. It didn't, it didn't need to change. I think, you know, I think it's a cool thing, but a good, a, sorry, <laughs> a good track can just play through all the menus, and you know, you're not losing anything. But maybe if you can do it kind of dynamically, you gain something. Anyway, I think we should listen to this track. This is a uh, a long track. This is nothing like the arcade games. They <laughs> they expect people to be sitting here for about five minutes. So I imagine with a lot of these songs, um, the game designer, Daisuke Ishiwatari, is probably writing all the rhythm parts and then, you know, he gets his band together and he's like, alright, that, that's a cool riff right there. And then he lets us kind of people solo over the top of it. I don't think any of these solos are, are written by the composer. But this is, this is a cool solo right here. Actually, no, I, was, I think I'm thinking of the next one. <laughs> Any of these characters, I don't know anything about this game. Nothing changes when you go to stage select. That's alright. The music is changing constantly. So... Oh man, this is that shredding. Liquid fingers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about this game. Characters. I don't know how to play it. Jump kick versus L Bell Get ready to it. No, don't, don't like the pauses, but you know. You think the old Street Fighter games, they Street Fighter 2 didn't have those pauses. It's just boom, boom, boom into the next track. Alright. Dramatic intro scenes. Women with big bubble <laughs> shaped breasts. This game's definitely over the top. Heaven or hell. Alright, here we go. Let's rock. Don't know I'm done. Alright, uh, folks, I think we'll leave it at this for now. I. We've had some okay examples. They haven't been great. You know, these are some of the greatest fighting games of all time. But, um... You know, it, they haven't necessarily served as good examples of what I wanted to look into in this episode. So, I really, 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 really want um, you guys and gals to... Post me some examples. Uh, tell me what games you think really do this whole um, dynamic music kind of thing in menus really well in the comments on the YouTube video. Um, and I'd love to do this episode again. Maybe, yeah, focusing in a bit more a bit more detail on everything that's going on. This has been a... It's been a weird episode. It's, um... Never done one like this. It's kind of... 
you know, half scripted and it's kind of half like I'm just doing a random streamed video talking on the spot. But anyway, I've enjoyed it. It's been a bit of fun. Hope you've enjoyed it. I will see you next time and I'm hoping for all those comments to fly in and I'm hoping to find some stuff that um, inspires me and inspires the other listeners and other composers out there as well so thank you all for tuning in apologies for the very uh, large gaps between the episodes but that's kind of the way it is going to be all right ladies and gentlemen remember to stay synthetic and i will uh, metaphorically be with you next time ciao Thank you.